Hello and welcome to another episode of Underworld Diary. If you have been enjoying the stories told on this channel feel free to hit the like and subscribe buttons below and help the channel grow. Today we will be focusing on the long-standing connection between the Italian Mafia and professional boxing. Specifically today, we will be examining the story of former heavyweight champion and all-time great boxer, Sonny Liston. A career surrounded by controversy Sonny Liston's name is synonymous with all-time great boxers, as well as the shady underworld of the business. Growing up in abject poverty Sony was able to beat the odds and become heavyweight champion of the world. However, this rise would involve shady figures who would have their hooks into Sonny until the day he died. Sonny Liston was born in 1932 in the small town of San Slough, Arkansas. Growing up in a household with 13 siblings, Sonny Liston's upbringing was chaotic. Born into a poor household Sonny and his siblings were often forced to do hard labor to help their father keep their home. Often struggling to get even a few dollars, Sonny and his siblings would often miss meals and were unable to buy new clothes. Resorting to them wearing the same clothes for weeks at a time. During these years it was said that Sonny's father was abusive and would resort to violence the minute one of the kids would act out. Growing up in this environment toughened Sonny up beyond his years, but also had a long-lasting impact on him that remained there throughout his life. The environment took such a toll on Sonny that by the third grade, he dropped out of school and never returned. This resulted in Sonny not having the ability to read or write throughout his life. But at the age of 13, Sonny was able to escape this toxic environment, as after the end of World War II the 13-year-old Sonny packed up. What little he had in Muvito, St. Louis to live with his mother, here life was a little better for Sonny, as the city life was a stark contrast to his life in Arkansas. However, even in this new city, Sonny was still poor and was in a rough area of town. Still not attending school Sonny turned to life in the streets. At age 13 he joined a local neighborhood gang and began committing petty crimes. With this gang, Sonny would begin to ratchet up his crimes over the years, and would eventually participate in an armed robbery that resulted in him getting locked up. He was eventually sentenced to five years for this crime and served it at Missouri State Penitentiary. Prison for Sonny wasn't as scary of a place as it is for most, as the already big Sonny Liston was no stranger to fighting. This time locked up is actually where Sonny Liston first started his boxing career. With support from a jailhouse priest Sonny was introduced to the sport and began participating in prison-sanctioned boxing matches. Sonny would continue participating in these matches throughout his sentence and was said to excel in the ring. This ultimately allowed the young Sonny Liston to stay mostly out of trouble and have something to pursue when released. With this newfound passion and help from the priest, Sonny was granted parole after serving 29 months in prison. Upon being released from prison Sonny Liston started to pursue his new passion of boxing. Starting out in the amateurs, Sonny would go around the country trying to make a name for himself. Eventually seeing success in the amateurs Sonny was able to win a Golden Glove award and build up an impressive resume. As buzz about Sonny started to go around, it was at this time that Sonny first became associated with the mob. As in his amateur career, Sonny met a man named John Vitale. John Vitale had a reputation as a tough and respected guy around the neighborhood. With a large interest in boxing, Vitale was quick to develop a relationship with Liston, seeing potential in the big heavyweight prospect. With Sonny not being paid during his amateur career, Vitale offered work on the side to provide for himself as he fought his way up the ranks. This, however, wasn't an ordinary job as John Vitale was a longtime associate of Frankie Carbo and Frank Blinky Palermo reputed mob bosses of the time. Once under Vitale's wing, Sonny would act as an enforcer for the Saint Louis mob, going out making collections and busting unions. Sonny built a fearsome reputation for himself outside of the ring. With an intimidating look, people would rarely hold out when Sonny showed up at their door. This connection with the mob would continue to be advantageous to both sides when Sonny turned pro in 1953. With a strong jab and furious power, Sonny was very quickly seen as a future star in this business. The mob seeing this potential and more importantly the potential to make money, quickly sank their hooks deeper into Sonny Liston, providing Sonny with the startup money. Necessary to start up his pro career, Vitaly and Saint, Louis crime family in return took up financial interest in Sonny Liston's career. It was reported that the crime family would take anywhere from 12-20% of Sonny's career, early on with the percentage growing as his career continued. With this financial backing from the family, Sonny would start to climb the ranks of the heavyweight division. 
while still carrying out the odd enforcement job for the family. This proved to not be a challenge for Sonny to balance as he was quickly able to become a top contender. In 1958 Sonny being a few fights away from a title shot, he signed under new management with a man named Joseph Prep Rowan being his official manager. However, this was not a step away from organized crime as some at the time thought, as it was discovered that Joseph Prep was truly the frontman for the St. Louis crime family and high-ranking mafia members Frankie Carbo and Frankie Palermo still controlled Sonny Liston's career. This connection, although Shady did work for Sonny in the early part of his career as in 1960 to Sonny was officially challenging for the heavyweight championship of the world. Fighting longtime champion Floyd Patterson, the tough and scary Sonny Liston was seen as a favorite heading into the fight. This proved to be true as Sonny was able to dominate the fight, stopping the then champion in the first round and becoming the heavyweight champion. Becoming champion was not only great for Sonny in his career, but it also meant more money was coming in. This of course made the mob dig deeper into Sonny, and led to what some consider the biggest scandal in all of boxing. With the mob seeing how much money they made from Sonny becoming champion, it was only a matter of time before they started to think how much they would make if he were to be upset. This aligned perfectly for them, as a brash, cocky, and skilled fighter was coming up the ranks and making a name for himself. This of course was Muhammad Ali. The buzz Ali created for himself has never been replicated and people were lining up round the block to see him win or to see someone humble him in the ring. When the fight between these two polar opposite fighters was first announced, the intimidating, powerful and downright scary Sonny Liston was not only favored, but many thought he may even end Ali's career in the ring. So as a massive favorite going into the ring, it shocked the world. When Ali would pull off the upset with Sonny refusing to come out of his corner at the start of the seventh round, thought to be a fluke or caused by a shoulder injury. On Sonny Liston's side, the rematch between the two was quickly set up. This fight much like the first saw Ali beating Sonny, but this time more controversially, as Sonny was knocked out in the first round by what is sometimes referred to as the Phantom Punch. A seemingly small punch knocked a former champ to the ground where he was unable to get up before the count of 10. It was also alleged that Ali stood over him at the time screaming get up nobody will believe this. The aftermath of these two fights has brought a lot of speculation over the years, with both men having alleged ties to organized crime and the potential to make tons of money from this upset. Many made the accusation of the fight being fixed. This speculation grew with people analyzing the odd stoppages further, with Sonny the tough list and falling to seemingly little punishment. However, none of these accusations have been proven and they are still just speculation at this point. After these losses to Ali, Sonny's career saw massive success. Winning 15 of his last 16 fights, Sonny retired from boxing with a final victory by way of stoppage over Chuck Webner. With an official record of 50 wins and for losses, Sonny retired as one of the greatest to ever do it. However, his story did not fade into the sunset. The former champion struggled with alcohol and substance abuse throughout his life and upon retiring dove deeper into this world. This ultimately would have tragic consequences as in 1971 in Las Vegas Sonny was found, laying on the ground dead from an apparent heroin overdose. As the story goes for most of Sonny's life, his death is clouded in mystery. As with no drug paraphernalia found in the hotel for Sonny to administer, a fatal dose and a lifelong fear of needles, many speculate foul play was involved. Some stated that his mob ties or association with drug dealers is what led to his death, theorizing that the former champion was forcefully injected with the fatal dose. These of course like many parts of Sonny's career and life are all speculation. However, the truth remains that Sonny was able to overcome abject poverty to become the heavyweight champion of the world. From what would have been almost certainly a life of crime Sonny was able to channel his energy to do something great. The connection with organized crime was seen as a means to an end for Sonny and allowed him to start his career. However, this association had lasting effects on his legacy and will always leave unanswered questions about Sonny's life and the integrity of the sport of boxing. Thank you for watching another episode of Underworld Diary. If you enjoy the stories told on this channel, click the like and subscribe button down below. If you have any topics you'd like to see covered in future videos, feel free to leave a comment. If not, I will see you next episode with another story from the Underworld.